Unit 7. Bonds. Introduction to the Measurement of Interest Rate Risk. Lecture 7. Duration Measures. Part A. So we're now going to look at duration and we're going to start with its definition. Duration measures the average maturity of a stream of bond payments. It's a linear measure of the sensitivity of a bond's price to fluctuations in interest rates. It is the weighted average time to full recovery of the principal and interest payments. It is measured in units of time. It's always less than or equal to the bond's maturity because the value of more distant cash flows is more sensitive to the interest rate. In mathematical terms, it is the slope of the tangent to the yield curve. So the three duration measures that we will be focusing on here are the Macaulay duration, the modified duration, and the effective duration. Now the Macaulay duration calculates the weighted average term to maturity of the cash flows from a bond, where the weight of each cash flow is the present value of the cash flow divided by the price. With the modified duration, we make a small adjustment to the Macaulay duration, and both the Macaulay and modified duration are used for option-free bonds. The effective duration is used for bonds with embedded options. So this is the detail for the Macaulay duration. It considers both the repayment of capital at maturity and the size and timing coupon payments prior to final maturity. And what you'll notice is that each cash flow or the discounted value of each cash flow is multiplied by its time. So essentially the cash flow at the Maturity, if maturity was 10 years, would be 10 times the present value of cash flow 10. And the reason they do this is because as the cash flows get further and further into the future, their present values get smaller and smaller. So in order to give their present value more impact, it's weighted by the time. Well now, on how to calculate the Macaulay duration, the bond is a two-year bond with an 8% coupon paid semi-annually has a 6% yield to maturity, it's non-callable, and it has a 1,000 Rand par value. So we now have to calculate the Macaulay duration. I'm going to go through this table which contains the details of the calculation for the Macaulay duration. And if you look at the cash flows, there are four semi-annual cash flows with the first three being just the 40 Rand coupon, while the fourth cash flow includes the 1000 Rand par value giving a total of 1040 Rand. We discount them at 6%. The first payment will be discounted for half a year, the second for a year, the third for a year and a half, and the fourth for two years. Calculating the present values and adding them together will give us a price of 1,037.17. And taking the weighted present values, we get a total of 3,920.16. And dividing the weighted present value by the price, we get a Macaulay duration of 3.77. 967 or 3.78. This actually gives us a duration of 3.78 semi-annual periods or 1.89 years, which is 3.77967 over 2. Now we move on to modified duration and this is an adjusted measure of the Macaulay duration that we will use to approximate the price volatility of the bond and here we're adjusting the Macaulay duration by yield to maturity taking into account the frequency of the coupon payment. We're now going to use the duration measures or the values for the duration measures that we've calculated 
to estimate the percentage change in bond prices for a change in yield. Looking at the formula, the question that will leap up at you is, so why are we putting a minus sign in front of D mod? Well, remember that price and yield are inversely related. So as interest rates go up, prices go down. As interest rates go down, prices go up. You have to allow for that. And that is why the minus sign is there.